Trematoda contains four important families. First family is Spatiolidae. It includes all liver flukes. And second family is Parampi stomatidae. It contains all ruminal flukes or uh, conical flukes. And the third family that is Cystosomatidae includes all nasal flukes. And fourth family is Paragonimidae. It includes all lung flukes. First family is Spatiolidae. It contains four important genera. They are fasciola, fasciolidia, spatiolopsis, and para parafasciolopsis. And uh, all these flukes are large, flat, leaf-like. If you come to the fasciola gene, it has a distinct cone, well-branched intestinal cica. It has two suckers, oral and ventral sucker. And if you come to the fasciolidias, on the left side tops uh, one, and it has indistinct cone and has anterior borders, uh, parallel borders. And the third one is fasciolopsis. It has simple intestinal cica, not that much branch as in the case of fasciola. The fourth one is parafasciolosis. This is not that much important. Genus fasciola has two important species, the species they are fasciola hepatica and other one is fasciola gigantica. So fasciola hepatica mainly found in the temperate regions, whereas fasciola gigantica mainly observed in tropical regions. These two species will be located in the bile duct of cattle, sheep, goat. So small flukes that are residing in gastrointestinal tract, they will get the nutrients by absorbing through their host gut. Hence, there is no requirement of branched intestinal cica for small flukes. Uh, which are residing in gut directly. Whereas in fasciola species that are uh, uh, remaining in bile duct and liver, they have to purely rely on intestines for absorption of nutrients. So in the case of fasciola species, intestinal cica are much branched and for absorption of nutrients from the host body. So we will see the life cycle of uh, fasciola. Metasarcaria directly enters the definitive host through grazing. So after uh, entry of these metasarcaria inside the intestines, uh, these uh, young flux will be existed. Uh, these young, young flux will be penetrating the intestines and uh, later enter the peritoneal ca cavity from where they migrate to liver and uh, become adults. So after fertilization, all these uh, adult flux, they will deposit the eggs. All eggs will be passed out or liberated through the feces of the definitive host. And each adult flu can lay about 3,000 to 3,500 eggs per day. And eggs are, eggs, eggs, they, all these eggs under favorable conditions, they will hatch into Miracidia. So this Miracidia actively swims in water for in search of second intermediate host. Mainly for Faciola hepatica, Limnia truncatula and luteola acts as intermediate host, whereas for Faciola gigantica, Limnia rufescens and Limnia auricularia acts as intermediate host. So, uh, this uh, further development of uh, this meraceria will occur in the host tissues, that is snail inter intermediate host, host. and uh, sarcaria is called as uh, gymnocephalus sarcaria. Up to sarcaria, development will occur in the snail tissues. So the sarcaria are called uh, gymnocephalus sarcaria means they have knacked head and uh, these sarcaria will be shedding into the surrounding uh, aquatic plants. So these all these uh, sarcaria, uh, they will be shedding from the snail tissues after 38th day of infection, post-infection from the snail. So all these sarcaria, uh, the transforming into a cyst uh, by a sticky substance, which is released by the cystigenous, cystigenous glands present in the head region, and the complete stage transforms into metasarcaria. So under favorable conditions, these metasarcaria, they remain viable up to 12 months. The final host uh, is infected when there is when these metasarcaria are ingested along with the vegetation. So total pre-patent period is about 10 to 12 weeks and entire life cycle is completed in about 17 to 18 weeks. Pathogenesis mainly depends on number of metasarcaria ingested by definitive host in its first attempt. So it results in three forms. One is acute form, subacute fasciolysis, third one is chronic form. So acute fasciolysis mainly occurs in sheep if it ingests more than 2,000 metasarcaria. So mainly it lasts for two to six weeks. And here there will be enlargement of liver, rupture of blood vessels and destruction of liver para parenchyma due to migration of all the immature flukes, resulting in traumatic hepatitis. So all hemorrhages with honeycomb-like appearance of tracts will be seen due to migration of all these immature flukes in the liver. So there will be destruction of uh, hepatocytes leading to increased release of all mitochondrial enzymes like aspartate, amino transferase, glutathione dehydrogenase and succinate dehydrogenase, be, there will be increase in levels of plasma levels also. And uh, <clears throat> the, the main complication of this acute fasciolysis is black disease. 
So uh, here, because of uh, all these uh, destroyed hepatocytes, they will have a brown pigment, that is iron porphyrin pigment will be present. It is attracting several species of anaerob anaerobic bacilli called as uh, like uh, Clostridium perfringens. So uh, they start rapidly multiplying in these uh, infected livers and the infecting black color to the uh, diseased liver. So the name black disease. So which uh, this black disease is not recognized before uh, because there will be acute uh, acute uh, death of the animals because uh, uh, because of this infection. So animals die so suddenly, so we, can, we cannot recognize this black disease. This acute stage later progresses into subacute or later uh, latent phase with less symptoms as sheep has only 500 to 1500 beta sacrarii. So liver is covered with migratory tracts which are created by adult flux through destruction of liver uh, surface or liver parenchyma. And there will be bottle jaw condition or intermandibular edema uh, also noticed. And this phase mainly lasts for six to 10 weeks. Then later, this subacute phase later progresses into chronic phase, which is most important and uh, common in the, uh, commonly occurring in, in the case of cattle. And uh, there will be uh, low doses of infection in case of definitive host with the 200 to 500 metasarcaria, anemia due to blood, blood sucking activities of all these adult flux will be observed and hypoalbuminemia and hyperplastic cholangitis and inflammation of all bile ducts and bottle jaw condition, hepatic fibrosis, liver will become hard. So the, all these conditions are, uh, will be noticed in the case of chronic form. And the clay pipe cirrhosis or pipe stem liver, this is a chronic form of uh, fasciolysis commonly observed in cattle. And this form is completely absent in sheep. So diarrhea is a common clinical feature of ovine fasciolysis. So these are a uh, cut section of uh, liver showing the immature flux. These are the migratory tracts and hemorrhages looking like honeycomb-like uh, structures due to migration of all these uh, immature flux. So these are the pictures of liver surface of a sheep died of acute fasciolysis showing hemorrhagic tracts formed due to migration of all immature flux which appears like honeycomb. Then this uh, first picture will be showing uh, presence of immature flux and the cut, sec uh, cut uh, section of liver which uh, as indicated by arrows you can observe more than uh, 10 immature flukes are there. And the second picture is showing recovered flukes from the cut section of infected uh, sheep liver died due to acute fasciolysis. And uh, some clinical signs we will see in acute phase of fasciolysis, there is sudden death with bloody oozing of uh, uh, means uh, discharges from the nostrils only. And uh, it should be differentially diagnosed from anthrax because in anthrax disease also, you can observe oozing of all tarry colored unclotted blood from all natural orifices, not only from nostrils, from ears, anus, like that. So, whereas in the case of acute facial acids, you can observe oozing of bloody discharges only from nostrils. In subacute case or subacute sub form, there will be bottle jaw condition, dry, rough skin, and uh, diarrhea and weakness will be observed. In the case of chronic form, only anemia, hypoalbuminemia, and uh, bottle jaw condition will be observed. So you can appreciate bottle jaw condition in the first picture. And uh, this is fibrosal liver diagnosis. So mainly this uh, facial acid can be diagnosed by collecting, means the collecting of history and uh, clinical symptoms shown by the animals and the post-mortem examination of lesions like hyperplastic cholangitis, liver hemorrhages. And uh, most important one is confirmatory diagnosis, which is mainly based on demonstration of eggs in the fe fecal samples through fecal examination. Best time for collection of fecal sample is midday when eggs are discharged maximum, not in the morning. So size, shape, and other characteristics of facial eggs will resemble those of amphistome eggs. You can appreciate in the pictures. This is facial egg, and this is the amphistome egg. So what is the main difference between the amphistome egg and facial egg is facial eggs are large, yellowish, tinged with indistinct operculum at the blunt end with hexagonal embryonic cells inside, whereas amphistome eggs are generally larger, lightish, blue, bluish tinge, and have a transparent shell with a distinct opercular at the sharper end. This is the main difference. And uh, serological examination for diagnosis, like uh, ELISA test and passive hemagglutination test are used. And differentially diagnosis in case of sheep should be done in a acute form of facial acid should be done from anthrax, whereas in chronic form, it should be differentiated from paratuberculosis and HS.
Detection of facial infection in small ruminants by immunological means has been attempted variously for early and specific diagnosis. So immunodiagnosis may be achieved by detecting circulating antigens uh, using defined antigen and monoclonal antibody respectively. So copra antigen detection in case of, in feces has been proved to be more successful nowadays and indirect immunofluorescence test using cryostat section of flu uh, and ELISA test and passive hemagglutination test are mostly used. Mainly our treatment should be aimed at uh, to disrupt or discontinue the life cycle stages of parasites. So triclobendazole at a dose rate of 10 mg per kg body weight can be used orally for control of both adult as well as immature flu. Uh, and another uh, and the, another drug is oxyclozenide. It can be used at uh, 10 to 15 mg per kg body weight for adults. Whereas in the case of uh, immature flux, we have to use three times higher. And the uh, oxyclozenide drug, if you are using uh, commonly, then uh, you can occasionally uh, observe loose feces and inappetence in the case of animals. So it can be used in combination with levamazole at a dose rate of three grams. Uh, against both liver flux as well as round, round worms. So it, it is used as a broad spectrum antihelminthic. And rifoxanate can be used at a dose rate of 7.5 to 10 mg per kg by the way. It can be used for control of both adult flux, immature flux, as well as sheep nasal bones. And albendazole uh, is the drug. Uh, it can be used at uh, 5 to 10 mg per kg by the way. But usage in the case of pregnant animals should be avoided because it will cause abortions sometimes. The incidence of this acute faciolysis normally recorded from uh, July to December months with uh, more than 1,000 immature flux with uh, zero EPG. And eggs will not be there in the feces uh, uh, during examination. And drug of choice is mainly triclobendazone. And uh, move or treat all the sheep at a time and move to a low risk pastures. Uh, otherwise, you can retreat your flock after three weeks with the same drug. And uh, Further deaths sometimes will occur due to liver damage and uh, uh, because of post-treatment uh, uh, from the liver damage incurred and subacute form normally observed between December to January with uh, less than 100 uh, egg output and uh, 500 to 1000 adults will be found along with immature flux. So chronic form, it occurs between January to April with uh, more than 100 EPG or output and more than 200 adult flux will be noticed in the uh, infected sheep and all flucicides can be used. Whatever the drugs I told in the uh, last slide, those can be used for treatment of chronic form. And the control of fasciola mainly depends on uh, five factors that is, destruction of snails, which acts as uh, which is housed as an intermediate host using molluscicides like copper sulfate, sodium pentachlorophenate, and the entretail morphine or frescon. All these are used for killing of snails as molluscicides. And biological control measures like uh, uh, using of uh, birds and uh, fishes. And the uh, number of snails can also be reduced by clearing of bushes as well as picking of uh, snails uh, from the directly from the uh, lands. And uh, control of wild mammals is also an important thing, which is uh, as these wild animals act as or serve as intermediate hosts, sometimes reservoir hosts. So control of wild animals is also important, mainly deer. And treatment of all infected uh, livestock tactically. So tactically drenching and treatment of all the infected livestock is very, very important. What is tactical drenching means? First dosing should be done during summer season for control of all immature flux. Then followed by second dosing, uh, mainly in the winter season to control um, for uh, treatment of immature flux. And uh, fourth factor is meteorological forecasting. It also has greater impact on free living stages of parasites and its intermediate host with their interaction between the rainfall and the temperature. Factors like surface wetness, wet day forecast, all these have greater influence on transmission efficacy of parasites mainly. Now dichrocelium dendriticum, and these are also very small and elongated flukes. Uh, they are called as lancet fluke or blade fluke, which has a narrow anterior end and posterior end. They have widest uh, uh, behind the middle and they are widest. And testes are lobed, tandem in position, and vital area are restricted mainly to the lateral margins. And the main difference in the life cycle of uh, this dichrocelium with that of uh, fasciola is uh, these uh, eggs, they do not hatch until they are ingested by intermediate host. So two intermediate hosts normally observed in the life cycle of this dichrocelium. Uh, first intermediate host is snail, that is land snail, macrochalmis, 
and second intermediate host is brown algae. So we will see the life cycle. Small dark brown operculated eggs will be passed out through the pieces of definitive host, sheep and goat, and eggs do not, does not hatch until they are ingested by snail. Intermediate host developmental stages in the life cycle are Miracidium, Sporocyst, Cercaria. Cercaria are called as Gicudio Circus Cercaria because uh, their oral circuit will be having a stalet. So, uh, Cercaria of uh, Dicrocelium is called as Gicudio Circus Cercaria. And Cercaria released from the snail, they will clump together along with a sticky, sticky sub, sub, substance released from the cystigerous gland, subhead region. And these slime balls will be expelled from the snail whenever there is drop in temperature in, uh, outside and these are directly eaten away by the brown ants. So all the metasarcaria insisted in the ants and uh, here radius stage is absent. So directly metasarcaria uh, will be causing the disease. So nearly 128 metasarcaria will be produced in the abdominal cavity of each ant and these metasarcaria enters the ants brain and causing tetanic spasms. So that mouth parts of the ants will be uh, sticky, they will become sticky and uh, these infected ants will be attaching whole night over the herbage and are readily available to the grazing animals on the next day. So the definitive host gets infection by swallowing all these infected ants. These infected brown ants climbing onto the top of the grass blade uh, due to tetanic spasms produced in its brain. So it will stay whole night on the grass blades and readily available to the grazing animals on the next day morning. So you have to leave your sheep for grazing after uh, means uh, two or three hours of uh, uh, in the early morning. So pathogenesis, the disease is caused by the parasite is called as dicrociliasis. It mainly uh, includes extensive scaring and uh, uh, extensive cirrhosis of liver surface and all the bile ducts will be distended uh, with the fibrosis and uh, marked proliferation of bile ducts. Epithelium will be observed and in severe cases, we can observe clinical signs like edema and anemia, emaciation and jaundice you will form. Diagnosis, treatment and control. Diagnosis, the presence of adult parasites of dicrocelium can be detected mainly by finding of characteristic eggs, brown colored eggs, small with a definitive distinct operculum in the, in the feces of definitive host and with well-developed miracidium will be pre present inside the egg. This is the characteristic feature of eggs of dicrocelium. And treatment, diamphenethyl, fenbendazole, thibendazole, albendazole, and cambendazole. All these benzobendazole group of compounds are useful for treatment of this dicrocelium dendriticum infection. And control is mainly through isolation and treatment of all infected animals through tractical drenching and destruction of both type of intermediate hosts, both the snail as well as ants is very important. 